Welcome everybody, I'm excited. You know, come on in, have a seat. I'm always just excited to tell people what it can do and what it has done. Okay, so basically I went to um, a workshop. My friend was there and she's like, come by. And so it, there was a spiritual womb healer. Her name is Marcia Lopez. She was teaching a class and she talked about vaginal steaming. And I was totally in the back like, I, these hippie chicks, they're always doing something like, you know, with their vagina. Like I just didn't, it didn't relate to me. Okay, I didn't feel it. But then um, the next year I was, I broke up with my boyfriend and it happened in a really shocking way. I caught him cheating on me and so I my body went into shock I was like under like a tremendous amount of stress and so with women when women's bodies go into stress there something happens always with their period okay so I went to this workshop I heard about vaginal steaming um, I wasn't interested it was about six months later my period completely went away usually when my period is gone I'm always just like sayonara see you later like I don't care like I'm not missing it I'm not like oh too bad my period's not here. I'm not, I don't care, okay? Like, I've never cared about periods. I'm just not that girl, you know? Um, women who uh, are more interested in their periods, and they're, to me, they're actually way more evolved human beings, you know, than I was. I was not, it was not something I was interested in. But, um, but I realized that I needed my period. So, I drove up to I lived in San Diego at the time. I drove up to LA, I found a Korean son, uh, spa that does vaginal steams for women, and I went. I go back to where the reception is sitting. Like, she's sitting here, and then, like, there's, like, this box. And so they pull the thing off of the box, and they're like, here you go. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. And the door is right here. And I'm like, I'm gonna do this right here? And they're like, yeah, 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 you're good. <laughs> you know, put on this big, you know, cloak. And so I'm like mortified because I'm like the most private person ever. And this was just not like, you know, anything I would ever do. And I was like so embarrassed, you know. But I did it. I sat down, I got through it. And, um, you know, I can't say it was like, so relaxing or anything. I was just really just distracted <laughs> because the receptionist and the owner were talking to me the whole time. They were like, American women don't do this. <laughs> they were like, why, why are you doing this? And like, they were saying like terrible things. They were like, yeah, American women like to be dirty. You guys don't do this kind of thing. And I'm just like sitting here just like, oh my gosh, I'm steaming my vagina right now and I need some privacy, you know? I'm just like embarrassed the whole time. So anyways, I get through it. I drive home, and the very next morning I wake up with my period. And I was like, great! And you know what? I woke up feeling peaceful for the first time. Um, I was about like two months past due for my period. And so I was just like, oh, well that was effective. I really liked that fresh feeling I had after I did the steam. So then during the period I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do it after my period's finished. I made my own chair so that I could do it in privacy. And I just started to do it every month once my period was finished. And um, what, uh, what happened was my period changed. Um, my whole life I had had periods that were, um, you know, not bad, no cramps, no pain, but for the most part it starts with brown, maybe a day or two of red, and then four or five days trailing of brown. And I always have to use a panty liner because I don't know if there's gonna be more spotting. And ever since I steamed, my next period, when my period started, it started on fresh red blood and it ended on fresh red blood. I never had that trailing of that old brown stuff anymore. At some point I learned to read the period and that brown stuff, it's old blood that is stuck in there. You know, so it's not a good, it's not something that you want. It's not desirable. Your period should be free of that brown stuff. And so steaming completely um, got my period healthy. And, um, and so I did it for several years and I didn't tell anybody. Um, I didn't tell anybody that I did it. <laughs> and so, um, until I had my first child. When I had my first child, I learned that steaming is used postpartum for post, you know, for postpartum care. So I set up my steam sauna in my room. And as people were coming over, my friends, my family, they were like, "What is this?" So it became a, a like a conversation topic. And so, basically, the cat was out of the bag. People knew that I did vaginal steaming, and I had to explain what it was. And this was back in. 2013 and Gwyneth Paltrow had hadn't told the world about steaming yet at that time and um, and so nobody knew what it was and so um, so I wasn't telling people really because I was like oh you got to do this I was telling people because they were asking me and they were you know 
had learned about it. But what happened is after, um, after I, I did the steaming after giving birth, and 30 days after giving birth, I had lost all of my birth weight. Weight loss is big. People talk about weight loss. People talk about weight life loss uh, products. And so that was really what was prompting people, uh, like, you know, friends of friends and so forth, to contact me. Because they were like, oh, I heard, you know, I'm pregnant and I want to lose all the weight right away. And so that was, that was the first thing that had interested people. I would just explain to women how to make one or how to do it themselves. And they were like, I'm not going to do that. Can you just make me one, basically? Uh, that was the first person that I sold one to. And, um, and so I made this woman a sauna, a steam sauna. And then all of her friends wanted it. And then all of their friends wanted it. And so I started to sell these. <laughs> and um, when I was selling them, I actually had an herb company, an herbal tea company. And I worked with an acupuncturist. And for my herbal teas, I would do a diagnosis. I would have the acupuncturist diagnose the person. And so once I started selling the steam saunas, they were also my herbal tea customers. And so we were doing diagnosis of each person and then choosing how they could, you know, how they could use the steam sauna. And I was keeping track of all of the, all of the, uh, their success. And so what happened was over time, uh, now I've probably worked with over 400 women and I've kept track of all of the success, what herbs they used, what their period was like starting, how their period changed. And I was able to recognize patterns for how to use this to treat different things. And at first, I didn't know what it could treat. You know, somebody came to me and she's like, I have these heavy 10 day long periods. They're maroon, the clots are huge. Is this gonna help me? And so thinking through it, I realized she had really bad circulation and really bad stagnation and a lot of old residue in her uterus. And so I'm thinking, well, if you remove that old residue and if you improve your circulation, maybe it will help. Guess what? It helped. She steamed three times in a row uh, the week before her period and her next period, this woman, mind you, she had had these periods for f going on five years uh, and it was postpartum. Ever since her last child, she had had these periods like this, but she hadn't had them like that earlier in her life. And she's in her 40s, she says, oh, well, they say it's because I'm in my 40s, so I don't know if it can change. I said, I don't know, let's try it. And she, she tried it, and her very next period was four days long, and medium bleeding. So I was like, oh, it treats heavy bleeding, and this is how it treats heavy bleeding. You see, so going along, working with women, I was keeping track of what it could do, and so now, um, Let's see, it's three years since I've been se uh, selling them to women and working with women to treat stuff. I've learned that this that little thing right here, it can treat everything. It can treat everything, you guys. Every girl problem, every gynecological issue, this box has a way of naturally treating. Um, I call it a little gynecologist in a box. <laughs> and it doesn't cost nearly as much as your gynecologist costs, and your insurance doesn't have to get involved. And you know, what's really powerful about it is that um, when you learn how to take care of yourself, you're in good hands. And you can't grow cancer, and we're gonna get into this in the talk, you can't grow cancer in a healthy uterus. So as long as you can keep your uterus healthy, as long as you can keep your period healthy, this is the best preventative medicine that we can have as women. Just for general hygiene, women don't have to have problems. It's good to use once a month at the end of the period. If you use it once a month at the end of the period, even if a woman has a healthy period, this is gonna make sure that she doesn't get cancer. It's gonna make sure she doesn't get fibroids. It's gonna make sure she doesn't get cysts or any of the problems that can happen. And it will make sure that her period is regular. So um, that it's you know on that regular cycle and it will make sure that she's very fertile. Okay, so it's just good. I mean, I think that every woman, every house with women in it should have at least one of these, you know. That's just how I feel about them. Or that the women would know how to do it, you know, even without having a steam box. Women all over the entire world use vaginal steaming. So I've been recording every time I hear of where, you know, somewhere, a new place that it's used. So these are the places that I've discovered that vaginal steaming is a traditional practice. South Korea. And it's actually really common there. They use it like every, like every spa has it. Like, you know, it's really common in South Korea, which is pretty cool. Indonesia. In Indonesia, they have vagina spas. If you ever go to Indonesia, make sure you stop by the vagina spa because they're going to do all kinds of things to your vagina, including steam it. <laughs> so um, it's uh, something they do in Vietnam. Uh, Eritrea, which is Eastern Africa. 
They do it in Ghana, Western Africa. They do it in Haiti, the Caribbean. They do it in Kenya. I found a book, a Hawaiian book. It was about herbs. And there was this account from one of those missionaries. And it was, he was writing about some herbs they were using in 1903. And he says the women put them in the ground on coals and then squatted over them and used banana leaves to direct it up, up there, you know, between their legs. We have vaginal steaming traditionally in Hawaii. I have not found any Hawaiians, any current day Hawaiians that are aware of the practice. It's common in Guatemala, in Mexico, in uh, Michoacan and Guanajuato, and then also in, um, I found it in three different states of Mexico right now, um, but it's done by the indigenous populations. So it's not really common knowledge um, uh, for people who aren't in those indigenous communities. It's done in Turkey, in the Middle East, so the women use it. They use it if they have missing periods. Um, they will do uh, vaginal steaming with um, parsley and milk. This is the first time I've ever heard of like milk being used. And I've never tried it, but one of my customers with uh, missing periods, I told her and she tried it and her period came back. <laughs> so it's cool. Um, South Africa, they do it. So now we've hit like all over Africa, like the whole entire continent, except for maybe Central Africa, but I'm sure they have it there. <laughs> um, then I've also found it in Suriname, South America. So, um, so the Surinamese women do it. Um, and then uh, in the South Pacific, Palau, the country of Palau. Um, it's a small, tiny country. There's only a population of 30,000 people. And um, I met a woman from Palau, and she was like, oh, yeah, we do that in my country. And she said that after a woman gives birth, then they'll do steaming for her, and that everybody in the whole entire country does it. Like, it's, if she says, if a family doesn't, it, it, and there's more, they have a whole postpartum, like, ceremony, and if the fam, and, and vaginal steaming is part of that ceremony. If the family does not do that for the woman, like, that would be their, sh like, the shame. Like, that would be, like, the worst thing ever. They would never be able to show their faces <laughs> or call themselves Palauans. So everybody, all of the women do it, um, which is pretty cool. And then, very recently, last week, um, I was talking to a woman who uh, shared with me, she, or she, there was a, there's a woman, she's one of my practitioners, she's learning uh, the practice of vaginal steaming, and she says she shared it with her Swedish sister-in-law. And her Swedish sister-in-law was like, oh yeah, my mom taught me to do that anytime I have a UTI, to use these herbs and to, uh, to do the steam. And that's something that Swedish women do. So that's the first um, you know, European reference. Which is, you know, important. I want everybody to know that no matter where you come from in the world, this is our inheritance as women. This is our heritage. We women use this. We use steaming. This is always how we've taken care of ourselves. Always. Since the beginning of time. And the only time, the only reason why it's not more common knowledge is just having lost touch with the traditional caretakers of women. Midwives. We only have about 4% of our population here in the U.S. uses midwives. Well, what I discovered in almost all of these places, um, I think it's like 80% out of these places, it's actually midwives who do the vaginal steaming for women after they give birth. So it's the midwives who know the practice. Well, we live in a place where we don't use midwives, and the midwives that we have um, are cut off from their traditional knowledge. The, basically, the point I'm trying to convey is that no matter where you're from in the world, this is your heritage. <laughs> was it something that passed along, like it actually was invented one place, or did everywhere women discover, okay, if you're having this problem, try this? You know, I, I honestly think that everywhere women kind of invented it. I think that it was just, it just makes sense. Um, if you have a problem, you could, you know, if you got a problem, just, you know, clean it, steam it, use these herbs, see if you can, you know, if you can address it. You know, vaginal steaming has been getting some media attention, and media treats it like it's something that's completely unscientific. It is not unscientific. All you have to do is do a scientific experiment. You take 10 women with bad cramps, you have all of them steam right before their period, and then you record the results. And that's what I do. <laughs> so I do the research, I'm recording the results, and the case studies that I have show that 
95% of all women with menstrual cramps will not have cramps anymore if they use the techniques, you know, the right techniques, you know, to use this. Their cramps will be gone forever. Um, bacterial vaginosis, I'm having actually a really high level of success treating that. Um, you know, and so on. So there's, you know, there's no reason why this isn't scientific. There's no reason why this is something that, you know, only like hippie women, you know, should do or something like that. This is actually, uh, there is some science. I have done the research and this has actually really, really successful results. And there's no reason why doctors shouldn't also be doing medical experiments on this, like, you know, and, um, and developing it into practices so that they can use for women. Imagine the things that you get in a gynecologist's office. You get poked, you get something shoved upside inside of you. If they're trying to treat certain things, they will cut you open to treat it. If you finish having kids, they'll take your uterus out altogether so that you have no threat of cancer. You know, like the, the things that they do, the surgeries, the cutting women open, like, you know, these are very, like, they're really invasive practices. The practices that doctors develop, um, their history is really shady. The history of them is really, really shady. So gynecology um, was a field of medicine developed by a man named um, J. Marion Sims from South Carolina. And he was a doctor, and he became interested in women's gynecological issues. And so he, what he did was he started um, practicing uh, medical experiments on his own slaves. And then he started purchasing other slaves to practice the experiments on. And so what he would do was he would do surgery on them. And this is the first time that gyne like surgery was performed on women, uh, as far as, you know, from a gynecologist. He would cut the women open. And he killed a lot of women doing his medical research. And um, so, I mean, current day, he would be a serial killer. This is who we would know as a serial killer. He is the grandfather of gynecology. So don't take my word for it if you guys don't believe Google it later. The grandfather of gynecology is J. Marion Sims. He, he operated on, it's unknown how many women. He finally learned how to cut women open, cut their uteruses open without killing them, and how to sew them back up. That is the foundation of gynecology. Once he learned how not to kill women by doing this practice, he started to train other doctors how to do it. He moved from the South up to New York and he opened a hospital. And that is the first gynecological hospital. I'm sorry, I don't have the name of it. But at that hospital, his, all his male doctors and him were cutting women open and they convinced white women to let them operate on them. And they promised them that they wouldn't feel a thing because of um, um, anesthesia, the development of anesthesia at the time. He didn't use anesthesia when he developed his practice, when he was doing his research with, on the slaves, but he did use it with the white women and he promised them, I'm going to cut you open and do whatever needs to be done and you won't feel a thing. And these women agreed to it and they paid them for their services. We are the descendants of those women that agreed to let those male gynecologists operate on them. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? You guys, I was doing this for a long time before I learned that <laughs> history. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it became a cause to let women know that you don't have to do that. Until that time, this was in the late 1800s, women had other methods of treating themselves. Guess what? Doctors perform surgery if they find a fibroid in your uterus. Does anybody have fibroids or ever had them in the back? Well, I had fibroids, <laughs> I had two. Anyways, uh, after I did my steaming, the fibroids were gone, okay? They melted right out. I work with women every day who have fibroids. Guess what? The fibroids fall out. They fall out of women. The women I work with, these fibroids are falling out every single day. And the doctors put them on a table, put them to sleep, cut them open, and scrape the fibroids out of them. So <laughs> what do you want? Do you want the methods that these men developed, these psychopaths? 
I mean, the dude who developed this stuff was a complete psychopath, serial killer. Is that the kind of medicine you want? Because gynecologists today, they have to study all of his notes. They learned the practices from him. <laughs> the gynecology is a science that was developed from him. <laughs> I don't want that medicine anymore. When I learned that, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Every day people approach me and say, oh, I have a cyst or I have a fibroid, you know, can this help me? And I, or bacterial vaginal, whatever it is. And I say, yeah, this can help you. And I say, okay, well, I'm going to talk to my doctor first. And then they come back and they say, um, yeah, he didn't recommend it, you know, or, um, uh, or I never hear from them again. You know, and I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, like, to me, that's like, it's uh, male patriarchy at its best, mm -hmm. you know? So um, it's, it's, you know, I didn't actually see, um, you know, I've traveled all around the world and I've seen places and situations where I think um, there's a lot of male dominance. But now, um, I, it didn't really touch me here in the US to that extent, but now I get it. That is a huge area where we are just over there like, oh, doctor, can I please, um, can I sit on this relaxing steam box to see if that will help my bacteria? But, oh, I can't, okay. What? <laughs> All over the entire world, women have always done this to treat their problems. And now, here in the US, currently, we've got gynecologists every day telling women, no, you, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> Why? Because they themselves haven't studied it. And they should be. They should be. They will. I'm like, <laughs> gonna make that happen, <laughs> you know? But, um, but anyway, so, so yeah, so, so it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to do vaginal CV, okay? It's okay. <laughs> okay, so I want to tell you guys what I've learned about vaginal CV. I want to share with you guys some of the case studies and what it can do for women. Postpartum. Okay, so almost all around the world where women still use this is for postpartum uses. And it's indigenous women, indigenous midwives that are still just use this like nobody's business. They know that you do it. That's what you do for a woman postpartum. Okay, what it does postpartum, you can use it, a woman can use it right after she has the baby, you know, two or three days after that, she can do her first vaginal steam. What it does is it helps if there's any tears. It helps to disinfect the tears. If there's any prolapse. How many mothers do we have in here? Yeah, okay, good. We got enough. Okay, so stuff moves down. Organs can fall out. Okay, for those of you that are not mothers, not to horrify you, but because you guys know about vaginal steaming that you won't have those problems. There's a lot of women who, you know, our parents age, they're just like, oh yeah, I've had, um, I've had uterine, I've had, uh, no, what is it, bladder prolapse ever since I had you in 1980. You know what I mean? Like, what, you know, prolapse is something that happens to women when they're not properly cared for postpartum. This is the way that women are properly cared for postpartum. Our doctors say, come back in six weeks. They test a woman. I don't know what they actually do at the six week visit. And then they just say, okay, you can have sex again. That's all the doctor does. Like if there's not any like real big problem, they say you can have sex again. So between when a doctor delivers a baby and six weeks, they give zero care. Okay, but this is the care. This is the care for women after you have a baby. You do a steam. It pushes all of the organs back up into place. And you know what it does? It tightens skin. You know how estheticians, has anybody ever got like a facial? They use steam and then your skin looks tight and beautiful. Same thing happens to the vagina. And it's important to tighten the vagina back after giving birth so that the organs don't fall out. People think it's a sexual thing. It's not. Although it does give men heightened pleasure <laughs> if a woman is tighter, supposedly. So that is usually why women think of vaginal tight tightening, but it's actually important for other reasons. And so we have this thing where people say, oh, it'll never be the same after giving birth. Um, I can say from personal experience, yes, your body should go exactly back to how you were before you were pregnant. And for mine, it has now twice after two babies. The vagina is just as tight as it was when I was a teenager and a virgin, okay? Because I steam for 30 days straight after giving birth. Steaming for 30 days, imagine if you steam your face for 30 days, you're gonna have a, a facelift, 
Well, steaming for 30 days postpartum gives you a vagina lift. And that's actually what they call it, a vagina lift. And women do it usually in their 40s or 50s. And it's usually thought of as a cosmetic procedure. Um, but it is something that gynecologists will do for, um, for women um, because they're having really bad prolapse. But a vagina lift, they actually cut the skin and then they sew it up a lot tighter and they cut out the extra like uh, like sagging skin and um, it, the, things can go wrong basically um, the scar tissue can be very irritated and like I had one customer she's in her 60s and they did a vagina lift on her because of prolapse and uh, she can't have sex with her husband now her, her husband of like 50 years like they can't have sex now because uh, they sewed her back up too tight unfortunately there's also I want to tell you because I'm on this male patriarchal like gynecology thing. The gynecologist gave her husband a high five and they were like, you're really gonna enjoy your wife now. You know, like, how, like what are these old white guys? You know, it's just like, oh my gosh. Like, you guys, I'm telling you, we are in a state of, women are in a state of emergency if they're allowing gynecologists to take care of them. That's how I feel. Like if, there, if there's no problem, you're okay. If there's a problem, you might be in danger, <laughs> you know, so as, far as, as far as I feel. But anyway, she was able to use the steaming to um, actually to relax things enough and to get rid of the scar tissue. So she's, um, so she's good now. Because steaming helps everything. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm talking about postpartum. It will help to disinfect the stitches. A lot of times if women have tears or stitches, they're fine. They can walk right after having the baby, but after three or four days, it gets infected. And so they walk like this. There's just too much down in the area. They give you a squirt bottle, which is useful, but it's not going to disinfect the tears or stitches like steam will. Come on, steam? They use it to clean things that you can't clean with water because steam can permeate you know, through the cells. Ste steaming is hot. Okay, it's warm and it brings a lot of circulation to the abdomen and a lot of women end up with bloating and a lot of water weight after giving birth. Well, guess what? Once you get that circulation going, all that water disperses and the weight is lost. So it helps you to lose the weight right away and, um, and that's just through providing the circulation to the, to the area. And then um, what it does is it ensures that your period will return normal. TV. What you heard is common knowledge that you, your periods will not be the same afterwards or you're supposed to expect differences. But the truth is, everybody's period, your whole entire life that you're having period, periods should be four days long of fresh red menses. There should not be clots, there should not be cramps, there should not be a lot of, there shouldn't be any discomfort, okay? That's what a normal period looks like. And, um, Women, after giving birth, their period will come back sometimes a lot heavier. If it comes back heavy and filled with clots, that means that she didn't get the proper uterine cleanse after giving birth. Okay, so there's not just the baby in there. There's, all, there's a placenta and there's all kinds of fluid and there's all kinds of stuff in the stomach when there's a baby in there. And all that stuff needs to come out. And, you know, we call it the, like, the period. You, basically, you have a period for like a month after you have a baby. No. If you do steaming, all of that stuff comes out. And so for me, it's always after the third steam. Then there's no more lochia, is what it's called. There's no more. You shouldn't, women, women will be bleeding for like six or seven or eight or nine months after having a baby, okay? And you know what doctors do? If a woman is bleeding for that long and she's complaining about it, uh, well, because if she's not complaining about it, they would not do anything. But if she's complaining about it, they'll either give her birth control to see if it stops, and a lot of times it doesn't stop. Sometimes it does. Or they do a DNC. They, what is that? It's an abortion. So wh what, what they do is they go in and they scrape the walls of the uterus. <laughs> Sorry to describe it. But, More yeah. So, no, they just, scrape. they actually, um, <laughs> they use this tool. <laughs> Sorry, but see, like, <laughs> anyways, whatever. So they go and they scrape the walls of the uterus. Okay, so they clean the uterus using a sharp tool. What does steaming do? It cleans the uterus using relaxing steam and herbs, right? So if a woman does the steaming postpartum, whether it's the month after, even I deal with women, you know, who come to me, it's been nine months and they're still bleeding. I have them do this and they stop bleeding right away. So um, I, have a, I have a baby and... Um, I had my first period a couple months ago, 
and uh, yeah, it was four days of fresh red menses and it was perfectly clean. So to me, that's a sign that I did enough postpartum steaming and I got the full uterine cleanse. If the period comes back heavy, you didn't get a full cleanse. Mm -hmm. If it comes back clotted, if it comes back brown, those are all signs that the uterus didn't get the full cleanse. And you know what? I've had women, so that woman that I had, she had 10 day long heavy periods and clotted and with brown menses, it had been since her last child, since she had delivered her last child. And it had been five years of that. So five years later, and she did the steaming and was still able to get her period to perfect. <laughs> you know, after just, I had her steam three nights in a row. So like, it's really effective even five years later for, being, for that postpartum treatment. And um, a lot of women, after they've had children who have bad periods, they're just dealing with the fact that they have not had proper postpartum care. Okay, so let's talk about fertility a little bit. A lot of women have something today <laughs> where they have unexplained infertility. They're not conceiving, but they don't know why, and their doctor doesn't know why. Well, you know who knows why? This gal. <laughs> okay, um, Unexplained infertility. Women with unexplained fertility um, always have a lot of old residue in their period. So... Um, so it's the brown menses, it's, um, it's the irregular cycles. Once you have a lot of brown buildup in there, old blood in there, then the period goes off. It goes to every two months or every three months. You know why? Because the blood can't even get through the, it can't get through the uterus. You know, you think of a, a woman who's had brown periods for 20 years, like how stacked up is that blood going to get? There's blood vessels that flush blood through the uterus. Those blood vessels, the, the blood is just packing at the top it can't even flow through you know it's kind of gross <laughs> but you know like unfortunately doctors don't understand this mm -hmm. and it's common sense you know how I learned about it you guys traditional Chinese medicine doctors mm -hmm. they know this stuff I read their textbooks <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to like see how they diagnose women and it's just it's easy brown blood stagnation there's old stuff in there you know so what happens is over time the fallopian tubes will actually uh, get clogged so the, the egg can't even get through the, into the uterus. And so those women, what they'll do is they'll do um, in vitro fertilization. So in vitro fertilization, they'll take the eggs out, they'll take some sperm from the man, and they'll put it up in the uterus. Well, if a woman has only brown blood in her period, sometimes she has two days of brown blood, and that's all her period is. Or sometimes she has one day of black spotting every six months. And she's having trouble conceiving, and it's unexplained, right? Um, they do this IVF. She's not going to get pregnant with the IVF, even though, it, and sorry, the attempt costs twenty thousand dollars. So this really breaks couples when this happens. She's not going to get pregnant because the walls of the uterus are still lined with old blood, and the egg can't implant. So, um, you know, that's like. Not everybody's that far, but everybody that I talk to who has unexplained infertility has a lot of old residue in there. And you know what we do? We clean out that old residue. Her periods start coming every 29 days or 28 days, and she gets pregnant. These women are getting pregnant fast, like right now. <laughs> like, um, like right now, my customers are getting pregnant faster than they should. Like I'm like, wait, no! <laughs> like let's work for three months. Why did you get pregnant already? You know, but they're getting pregnant so fast. And you know. All the stuff that could get stuck in women's uteruses is a lot of things. It's old blood that's brown. It's uh, blood from the circulation. Like if the circulation is slow, blood will congeal. Those are clots. They're usually fresh looking. It can be mucus. Um, mucus. Women can have mucus stuck on the walls, like dried mucus. Um, women can have dried blood. They look like paint chips when it comes out. So like, you know, I'm working with my customers. I ask them what they see after when they'll do their steaming. And then when they have their period, they'll have all of this stuff come out. But those are all the, those are all the different things that can be stuck along the walls. Other than that, there should be nothing on the walls, <laughs> you know, which is why this works so well, because it gets the uterus back to what it should be, which is clean and healthy. This is really efficient at, you know, what it does is it's steam. So it liquidizes whatever matter is in there, okay? So like um, I did, a, I did a, a scientific experiment. I took glue and I glued, I like smeared it all over a jar on the inside and then I put like a big glop and like I held it over, I um, actually I had like a rack and so I put it over a steaming pot. Do you know how fast that glue liquidized and came out? 
I let the glue harden for 24 hours. It came out, like five minutes later, all that glue had turned into liquid. It was down in the pot. This is steam. Steam liquidizes matter. You know, you guys, uteruses are self-cleansing. And one of the biggest arguments against vaginal steaming is, don't do anything, women. Your uterus cleans itself. Your vagina is self-cleansing, so you don't need to do anything. Well, if there's brown blood in there and dried pink paint chip, you know, in there, then clearly the uterus isn't functioning the way it's supposed to. And there's lots of reasons why it doesn't. Um, but that's a, that's a, a different talk, <laughs> like how to have a healthy period naturally and why, why these problems happen. But there's so many women who have brown blood and think it's normal. I was one of them. I thought that the blood was supposed to be brown. I remember asking, uh, you know, my gynecologist about it when I was 20. And he was just like, oh, it's normal. Has it always been like that? It's normal for you? Then that's fine. No, that's, that's not fine. <laughs> you know, like now I know it's not fine. So anyway, so there's all kinds of stuff that can get stuck. Um, and once you get it out of there, then the uterus goes completely healthy, extremely fertile, and the period is pain-free. Cramping happens because the uterus knows that something is stuck in there and it starts to try to get it out. It's actually, there's no difference between cramping and contractions, labor contractions. <coughs> the only time the period, the uterus should be cramping is to push a baby out. It should not be cramping to push out some stuck mucus on your walls. Do you know what I mean? It shouldn't be cramping because you have old brown blood in there, right? It should not be cramping, but it, it's cramping because it's like, oh, there's stuff in here. And so it has like a signal, like, okay, help, help push it out, you know? And um, so cramps are a sign of old residue in there as well. And so, um, so women, I mean, there's so many women who have like painful periods, uh, you know, because of cramps and stuff. And, you know, they're able to get pain free right away. I worked with a woman last month. Um, and it was such a satisfying, ca satisfying case because she's been dealing with it for like 30 years, just these really painful periods. And they're so painful that her, peri that her uterus cramps all month long. And so her doctor tested her for cysts, he tested her for fibroids, he, he didn't find anything. He said, there's nothing wrong with you. And just gave her stronger pain medi medicine. So she's just popping pain medicine all month long. Her uterus, <laughs> she's walking around and she's contracting all the time, cramping. And so um, she steamed once. <laughs> she only was able to steam once before her period. No cramps. <laughs> she only steamed one time. I told her to steam 10 times, 10 nights in a row. She steamed once. She hasn't had cramps since. You know, like, it's so awesome. So she's not having them during her period or when she's not in her period. And she's like, nothing ever works with me. It always takes so long. And then also stuff works for other people and it doesn't work for me. And so I was expecting that. So she wasn't a, even a believer. <laughs> she was just like her last resort since her doctor said he couldn't do surgery on her. He had nothing to, to, to operate for, you know? So she's like, I guess I'll do the vaginal steaming. So she tried it. She, she didn't believe that it was gonna work at all and it worked immediately. So very successful. You clear out the old residue, the uterus will stop cramping, the woman will not be in pain. Let's talk about bacteria and yeast infections, okay? So a sign of this is the odor. If you're <clears throat> noticing a different odor, that's the first sign, that there's gonna be some type of excessive bacteria or excessive yeast in there, or even a virus, okay? So um, I'll just give you guys, you know, an analogy, I guess. So like if you, you know that person that washes the dishes but they don't wash them that well? <laughs> the old stuff is on there? Um, would you eat off of that plate that has like somebody washed a couple days ago but it still has cr food crust on it why wouldn't you eat off of it bacteria it's grown bacteria okay now if that food crust wasn't on it would it have any bacteria the plate no it would be clean a glass plate would be clean if it doesn't have the food crust on it that food crust gets left on there and it's left to sit, it grows bacteria. Mm -hmm. That should not be on it, okay? Now what if that plate, the next time, so what if somebody used it and then they washed it again and left even more food crust on it? It would have even worse bacteria. And you know what? 
it might grow some mold on it too, right? On that old food, like mold might grow, okay? Well, you know what yeast is? It's a fungus. And you know what mold is? It's a fungus. So women end up getting excessive bacteria or yeast growth in their uterus when they don't get a full uterine cleanse. So if there's not old stuff build up in the uterus, then the uterus will not grow uh, bacteria that's not supposed to be in there or a fungus that's not supposed to be in there. And it's just that simple. So women with um, uh, excessive bacteria overgrowth uh, and recurring yeast infections, UTIs, and viruses, these all fall under the category of women who have a lot of mucus in their uterus stuck on the walls okay so it's usually mucus and then there's usually some old blood in there too like you know some brown in the period but the main thing is there's so much mucus in there it's really really overly damp <laughs> mucus is mucus is mucus is mucus okay the mucus in your nose there isn't any there shouldn't be any mucus in your nose all the time right if you have mucus in your nose you got a cold or you got like allergies there's some problem when there's too much when there's mucus like running out of your nose all the time well vaginal discharge the other name for it is cervical mucus that's the scientific name for it the mucus that comes out of your nose like would you want to touch it and then touch other people no why <laughs> because you'll make those other people sick why because it's got the germs in it it's got the germs in it <laughs> okay <laughs> same with the cervical mucus okay it's got germs in it I don't know if it's bacteria yeast or a virus usually it's all three like every woman that I know that has BV she's got a yeast infection coming too you know and you know what she might catch an STD like she very likely will catch an STD as well because you know why she's got all that mucus in there and those things they just they just love it in that mucus you know so Women who have um, recurring bacteria and yeast infections, um, they also report having a lot of thick white or yellow vaginal discharge, and they have it regularly, and it has a smell that they don't like. They also report having sticky menses, like their period itself is sticky. It might have a sticky consistency sometimes. Some months it does, some months it doesn't. You know what that is? That's the mucus in the blood that's that's getting pushed out. We can't avoid bacteria. We're exposed to it everywhere. But you just, if you can clear out that mucus, you can you can get rid of the, the problem. And so um, women with BV, I'll have them steam. A lot of times I'll have them just do it 10 nights in a row. And it, it'll be a cleanse. It's a detox. And so um, they report a lot of uh, mucus coming out, like a lot more than normal. And, um, you know to cleanse and so some of them actually it, like I warn people now ahead of time about it so this one woman she had like she said the green gob monster came out she had never yeah. seen green mucus before she said a green gob came out of her where do you think the BB was living it was living in that green gob and where was it I mean it's the uterus like it's a uterus where was it it was on the wall somewhere you know it was in the fallopian I don't know where it was but it was in there for how long was it in there? Like, I don't know, you know? But anyway, she got, she did her 10 day cleanse. And so the idea is, or it could be five days. The idea is that the, the mucus stops flowing out. Once the mucus has stopped flowing out, you know that you've gotten all the mucus out. And once you've gotten all the mucus out, the pH will go back to normal. Mm -hmm. the, vag the normal vaginal flora that's supposed to be in there will be able to survive. But it's all, it can't survive with this other excessive like overgrowths in there. It can't survive. So um, there is a doctor, uh, Jen Gunter, she's a gynecologist, and she is uh, one of the biggest uh, voices against vaginal steaming. And she says that she's an expert in vaginal flora and that they've only just started to understand vaginal flora and how sensitive it is and that it actually protects women from STDs, okay? And she says, and we only just got the, the scientific evidence of this last year, you know, one year ago, you know? <laughs> so, like, so, okay, so the, basically what I'm understanding is that they still don't understand it, okay? And she says that, that doing anything, including vaginal steaming, will upset the healthy vaginal flora. And so, um, you know, women are going to expose themselves, overexpose themselves to, like, now catching viruses. Well, 
Think about it. Do you think that your healthy vaginal flora just is just chilling in there during your period? Your period flushes everything out of the uterus once a month. It flushes everything out. The blood does. What happens to the vaginal flora? It repopulates once a month. <laughs> vaginal flora is a lot more dynamic than Dr. Jen Gunter understands. They don't understand it yet. And yet this is one of the main arguments that, at first doctors were saying all kinds of stuff about why not to do vaginal steaming, but now they've all held onto this one. This is the one, now two years after Gwyneth Paltrow told everybody about vaginal steaming, this is the one that all the doctors have held onto, like they've sunk their teeth into. A vaginal floor is dynamic, you guys. It's dynamic. And to assume that you know, you're going to harm the vaginal flora. When you're, who are you talking to? Are you talking to a woman with excessive bacteria overgrowth? Then she's, there's no problem with her harming her. Her flora is already harmed. <laughs> it's already compromised. <laughs> Treat the problem so that her healthy vaginal flora can grow back. And you know what? It'll grow back once a month. And all I know is that um, odor, even for doctors, is the main sign that there's, a, that there's some type of excessive overgrowth. Odor. Uh, like an odor that isn't, you know, healthy or does or smells off. Well, across the board, every customer I've ever had, and I've worked with over 400 women, reports a better odor, a more pleasant odor, a flowery smell. You know, like, and basically what ends up happening is women end up with only that healthy, clear uh, cervical mucus. It's not mucus, sorry, um, I call it nectar. Women should have clear, fragrant nectar that smells flowery or like even a little bit soapy or something like that. And that's it. All of the rest is mucus. It's like a runny, it's like a runny vagina, <laughs> you know. For treating, uh, for treating these types of issues, it's really important to get the herbs right. So my herbal blends have a lot of, uh, not, not all of my herbal blends, but the ones for treating this issue. Um, they have a lot of drying herbs in them that help the situ like to, to dry the overly damp situation and that uh, they have a lot of antifungals, antivirals, and antibacterial herbs. And, um, you know, I work closely with acupuncturists. I have an acupuncturist who's my business partner for several years. And she told me these two herbs that are used in traditional Chinese medicine that they give to their people, uh, uh, like internally, when they have, um, you know, bacterial vaginosis. Yo, those two herbs work. I put them in my steam blend, and ever since then, <laughs> bring, bring on the BV. There's no way it's gonna get past my herbs. My herbs are gonna kill it. And so there's two things that you have to do to treat it properly. Get rid of all of the mucus, like get it all out of there. It's a detox, you have to do a cleanse, you know? And then to kill the excessive, you know, stuff that, you know, microbes that are in there that shouldn't be. And so that's my approach. And, you know, like, um, so this is where, you know, you have to have some knowledge. Like, I learned how to treat this through working with women. But, you know, if you just learn that it can help BV, and so you do one steam, and then you say, oh, I still have BV, you know, that's not how it works. Like, you have to understand, like, the science behind and what you're actually trying to, you know, trying to achieve. And then, so again, if you work with somebody like me, <laughs> you know, you're going to get those results. And I'm training some practitioners now as well, too, because I don't want to be the only one with this knowledge, because nobody uses my tactics. And nobody else uh, that I found around the world uh, understands how to use the traditional traditional Chinese medicine to properly read women's bodies in order to be able to, you know, to then treat them properly. Long periods or irregular periods, it's just the old residue. Once you get rid of that old residue uh, and improve the circulation, then the period will come on time. Okay, and I wanted to talk about short cycles. Short cycles, it's actually a deficiency. Um, so what happens is when women, women, women are so great. Women do everything, you know? Um, and women take care of a lot of people, <laughs> you know? And women tend to get very busy and then sometimes don't have enough time for self-care. You know, I don't know. I don't know from woman to woman, but basically, um, what can happen when women have short cycles, the pattern is usually that she is really doing too much. She's exhausting her body and her body. It's not that the period is coming at 20, 
21 days or 25 days or however much it was it's that the body is just exhausted and so the blood just comes out like the body actually just lets go like the body cannot hold the blood in the vessels any longer that's how they describe it in traditional chinese medicine and so it's called a deficiency women with short cycles all are just either they're stressed or they're busy so it's really important for a woman with a shorter cycle than 28 days 27 days or shorter is too short it's really important for her to understand from month to month if one month she has a 28 day cycle and then the next month she has a 24 day cycle what affected her that month was she taking care of somebody in the hospital and going there after work and then going home to the kids you know what I mean? Like women do all kinds of things, you know, and, and some there are sometimes situations that you can't avoid. But what is it that happened? Was it stress? Was it worrying? What it, you know, what like was it a, something that was happening at work that was, you know, an unpleasant you know, situation? Um, because it's the, the worrying and the stress in particular <laughs> that exhausts the body. Um, until recently, I didn't know that vaginal steaming could extend cycles. But then, again, working with a traditional Chinese medicine doctor, I was looking at the herbs used in order to extend a woman's cycle and when those herbs are used. And I have a, uh, this one herb blend, it's called the Downtown Chick Herb Blend. And it uses the same herbs that TCM doctors use to extend women's cycles internally. I put them in the steam and it um, extends women's cycles, usually on the first month, the first try. Um, at least I've had now about 15 women whose cycles it's extended. I've only been, I only created this, this blend in May, but I'm so excited. And um, that's like herb science right there. That's like, that has to do with the herbs. So um, steaming with the wrong herbs, actually any other herbs that anybody with a short cycle steams with will shorten the cycle. <laughs> like I've done all these different herbs, they all shorten the cycle except for this one herb like very specific herb blend that i have it's the only one i know that can extend cycles so um that's really exciting i'm really excited about that so um that's really important too because that's another category of women who have trouble conceiving women with short cycles a lot of times they ovulate early and then the follicle the egg isn't mature enough and so they might be able to fertilize the egg but it doesn't hold like it won't be able to implant or you know she'll miscarry uh, early on and so um, so I thought for a long time I wasn't able to help those women but now that I can extend their cycles I can help them as well just using vaginal steaming so that's really good okay fibroids so remember we're talking about women who have like all this cervical mucus or excess mucus in the in the uterus fibroids are basically when that excess mucus congeals turns into phlegm and it sticks to the wall that's what a fibroid is it's actually very simple and just like mucus will liquidize and melt right out, a fibroid will melt. So when women are doing their treatments for fibroids, um, they report increase in cervical mucus. They have a lot of cervical mucus in there anyways. That's not fibroid form. But what I think happens is I think the fibroids actually just melt their little way out too and come out of cervical mucus. And then, um, and then some women, the fibroids actually just fall off and come out in clunks and when they're on the toilet or in the shower. Those are the two reports of where it has happened. So um, fibroids, <clears throat> we don't need to do surgeries for them anymore. You guys, fibroids are really common. Three out of every four women are supposed to have fibroids at some point during their lifetime, okay? So I'm really happy nobody in this room has them, but when you, if it ever happens that you go to the doctor and they say you have them, just remember, you don't have to do the surgery, okay? And when you hear of other women that have them, please, let them know they can do vaginal steaming to get rid of the fibroids. They don't have to do surgery, okay? So um, it also helps with cysts. Nobody in here reported having any cysts. Cysts, um, cysts are basically like pimples that happen in the female organs. It can happen, they can happen on the lips, they can happen in the vaginal canal, they can happen on the cervix, they can happen in the uterus. They're cysts, okay? And they fill up with fluid. They're really, they're, they're pimples, you guys. They're these inflamed red bumps that fill up with pus. And, you know, like when you take a shower and you have a pimple and it just drains right out, same thing with cysts. And this is really important to know this as well because doctors will go in to scrape the cysts out and they will do surgery for it, you know. And one of the problems with cysts, cysts and fibroids, if they're sitting in there, they're antagonizing the uterus and the uterus 
will usually be cramping really bad. So women who don't have painful periods and then all of a sudden they're having painful periods, doctors will immediately check them for cysts or fibroids. Usually they'll have them and then have to suggest surgery for them in order to get them out of pain because that cyst or that, that fibroid, even though they're not a big deal, they're antagonizing the uterus and then the uterus, th then they get into pain and then they get themselves into surgery, <laughs> you know? They burst yeah, they naturally can burst and drain out. But they don't always, and women go under the knife every day because of cysts that haven't burst. Um, but imagine how easily they drain when you just give them a little bit of steam. Hemorrhoids. So yeah, so vaginal steaming can help hemorrhoids. All you have to do is lean back and let the steam hit the bum, and it basically what it does is it shrinks the skin back in, you know, and so it works very effectively for that. So miscarriage is really dangerous for women because a process is started and then when the pregnancy fails, what happens? If a woman gives birth, the body knows that the uterus is now empty. If a woman miscarries, the body doesn't know if there's a baby in there or does not a baby in there. The hormones a lot of times won't go back to normal. They don't know if they're nurturing a baby in there or if they're not. And, you know, miscarriage is something that it's really painful for women. It's not something, it's something very taboo. Women don't talk about a lot. A lot of times a woman will miscarry and not miscarry completely and her periods won't come back. I mean, like there's so many things that can happen with miscarriage. And then there's even where the pregnancy fails and the fetus is no longer alive. It no, it no longer has a heartbeat. And then she doesn't miscarry. So she's just walking around with the fetus and she uh, has to do a DNC procedure. And when women are trying to conceive and then they miscarry, you know, they're devastated and, um, and then their periods don't come back so they can't even try again or they're trying even though the, the period hasn't come back and or the period never comes back the same after a miscarriage or it comes back really heavy, you know, so all kinds of things happen with miscarriage. Steaming for miscarriage is just as important as it is for postpartum. It will get that uterine cleansed and it will actually let the woman's period return back healthy and return back uh, and balance all the hormones um, in a really timely fashion. So like, I don't know, like, you know, different people say different things and I don't know, like what people's source of information is. Which was, oh yeah, it takes six months for the period to come back after a miscarriage. No, if you clean out the uterus, it'll actually come back right away. Um, and it will come back, if you do the steaming, the period comes back healthy, whereas it wasn't healthy before. So far, everybody that I've worked with who had, miscar who had a miscarriage, they do steaming, they get their period back healthy, and then the next time they conceive, they have a successful pregnancy. I've never talked to a woman who miscarried who had a 28-day-long period with four days of fresh red menses. Never. It's never that woman who miscarries. It's when women's periods are unhealthy that they're at risk of miscarrying. So I really encourage women before they do try to conceive to get their period healthy, to get their uterus healthy. It should be healthy all the time, but like, I don't, you know, we just don't have enough information, unfortunately, from our doctors about what a healthy period is supposed to be like. When you get your period healthy, that risk of miscarriage, I believe that it goes away 100%. So, I mean, that's really amazing. So, you know, miscarriage, usually women will only talk about it with a couple, you know, trusted individuals. Now you guys know, you know, and when they, you know, like one of the reasons why I give this talk is so that you guys can carry this information forward, you know. A lot of women have pain during sex. A lot of women have negative sexual experiences. They have trauma in their, in their, in their past. And so pain during sex happens when women uh, either tighten up, so the muscles tighten up, or it happens because they're not lubricated enough. So women uh, post-menopause often have pain during sex just because they're not lubricated enough. Steaming solves both of that, those problems right away. Women who have, I've worked with some women who have never had sex without pain, you know, whether it's been 20 years, 30 years, however long, and I'm sure they have a, a history of sexual trauma in their past, whatever. They steam and then they don't have any pain. But also, women who don't have that problem, who use this, either before sex or just use it in general, will have heightened sexual experiences because it brings circulation to the area. And basically, if you think of everything that is foreplay, everything that it takes to get a woman to be ready, all of it improves circulation. Massage, heat, kissing, 
touch every single thing improves circulation to this area. So improve so good circulation is good for women to enjoy a sexual experience. Steaming already brings all of the blood and gets all of the circulation going. So the question is, is it gonna feel sexual when you sit on a steam sauna? No. Sometimes women do a steam session and afterwards they will feel very sexual, like they'll want their partner to come home right away or whatever. That does happen sometimes. But it is an, it can be a, a libido increaser, but in general, that's what happens. The increase in the circulation to the area is what causes women to have such a better experience. In addition, I think it has to do with the way that it makes you smell and the fact that you have this clear, fragrant, flowery, like, you know, like the nectar. Like, I think to, for me, all of those were things that also heightened the experience for me because I had no insecurity anymore. I was just like, oh, wait, what's it going to smell like right now? Like, I didn't, I, that's no longer an issue, you know? So it does create more confidence, I think, you know, around those areas. You take the, the, the pot of herbs, you fill it up with water, you boil it, and then you put it in here. You test it so that it feels comfortable. I keep on getting the question lately, um, can I burn my privates off? <laughs> I'm like, no, don't, don't burn your privates off. <laughs> like, test it. And then when you're ready, you just, you know, remove your bottoms and sit over it. And that's all, that's all that happens. And it feels really nice. I do free, uh, free consultations. When you go to my website, steamychick.com, there's a quiz. So the, the reason why I don't just talk to you guys about how to steam and when you should steam is because it's different for each one of you. So I prefer you go online. If you take my quiz, don't worry, it doesn't go to anybody else. I'm, I don't have an assistant or anything. I get all of the information I need to tell you what you want to know about vaginal steaming and when you need to steam, what herbs you need to steam with, and so forth.